These days, the words photo retouching tends to bring up the mental image of models and airbrushing. But retouching a photo can be more about preserving memories than creating false ones. Photoshop is a great place to manipulate photos and create unrealistic representations of the world around us. But it can also be a place where we preserve and archive memories. Scanning in an old photo, whether it be from a film negative or a print, is easy. With a home scanner and computer, cataloging your memories, like your own wedding for instance, is merely a weekend task. But what happens when your scan comes out with lint or imperfections? Or the image you choose has been faded by sun and time? My name is Noelle and I work here at Gwinnett County's Public Library. And today I'm going to show you how to clean up your scanned photos in Photoshop. This tutorial presumes you already know the basics of how to use Photoshop. If you are new to Photoshop, I would recommend visiting the Adobe website for some excellent and brief tutorials on the basics of the software. Or visit a video tutorial website like lynda.com. In this video, I will show you how to use the autocorrection algorithms and the curves adjustment layer to fix any toning and color issues. Then I will show you how to use the spot healing brush and the clone stamp tool to fix small blemishes and tears in your image. Remember, the purpose of this video is not to show how to restore an image. That is a whole new topic. And our goal isn't to retouch the image either. Merely, we want to remove any distracting blemishes from the photo so it is perfect to post on our Facebook, Instagram, or print and hand to a family member. So let's hop right in. The first step in cleaning our photos is making sure we have the proper colorization on our image. Sometimes our photos will be faded because of age or sun damage, and Photoshop makes it easy for us to fix this. The quickest method to restore your photo colorization is by using the automatic color algorithms included with Photoshop. If you navigate to the image menu, you'll be able to find the auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color options. To explain what these do and how these options function, I first have to explain the color channels. RGB stands for red, green, blue. It's the color model by which digital screens render color. Every color we see when looking at our phone, our tablets, or even television screens are a combination of these three colors. In Photoshop, color images are split into three channels one for each color in the RGB color model. Autotone will look at each of these three channels, assess the lighting values, and then fix them based on what it believes the lightest and darkest tones in your image should be. Because of how thorough this option is, Autotone will almost always fix any tone issue you have quickly. Auto contrast and Autotone are very similar. The difference is, Auto Contrast will not look at these channels individually, but it will look at your image as a whole before making its decision on what the lightest and darkest shades should be. It is an excellent choice for black and white photos, but it isn't as thorough as Auto Tone for colored images. Auto Color is very similar to Auto Tone, but with one added step. In addition to checking the lightest and darkest values, it also checks the middle values for any colors that might seem a bit off. This makes it perfect for images that have a slight yellow tint to them. When in doubt, remember you can use all of these options and see which one works best for your image. I'm going to go ahead and use the Auto Tone option on this image so you can see how it improves our photo. There are instances in which these options don't fix your issues. So if you're looking for a less destructive method of editing tonal quality, then adjustment layers are your friend. Adjustment layers allow us to adjust details about the image without destructive or permanent modification. So let's undo our auto tone modification by navigating to our edit menu and selecting undo auto tone. Next, 
Let's find our curve adjustment layers by navigating to our layer menu and scrolling down to the new adjustment layer dropdown. Here you'll see the curves option. Alternatively, you can left click the adjustment layer button at the bottom of your layers panel and select curves from here. The curves adjustment layer will function in a very similar way to the auto tone and auto contrast features. Instead of Photoshop deciding what my darkest and lightest tones are, however, I will. There are quite a few options in the curves adjustment layer that I will not go over, but feel free to check out the Adobe help page on this topic. If you look at the side of the curve adjustment, you'll see three droppers, black, gray, and white. The black dropper will allow us to select the darker or darkest shades in our image. The middle dropper, the gray dropper, will allow us to select the middle shades of our image. Shades that are not too light or too dark. The third eye dropper, the white eye dropper, will select the lighter or lightest shades in our image. So let's start by selecting the black dropper. Then on the image, left click the darkest value inside of your photo. I will aim for the shadow by our subject's knee. When I left click, my image will automatically adjust to the change I made, but don't panic if it doesn't look right just yet. Now let's select the white dropper and left click on the brightest color in our image. In this instance, I'll choose the sky in the background. Once we do that, Photoshop will adjust our tonality based on these two points and our image should look much better. From here, we can select our gray dropper tool and select the shade that is in the middle. Something not too light or not too dark. Medium. For this dropper, I chose the medium gray on our subject's pan leg. That looks a little better. Now that I've adjusted the tonality of my image, it should be noted that because I'm using an adjustment layer, if something doesn't look right, I can go back and select a different shade until the tone matches what I want. That is something I can't do with the auto tone option. Now that we've made our color adjustments, we can move on to cleaning our photo. Let's use another photo as an example. In this photo, you can see it was scanned in an excellent resolution, but it has a few blemishes that detract from the photo as a whole. So let's start out with our color corrections. Now let's take a look at some of the dust and scrapes on this image. Remember, our goal is not to retouch, but to remove some of the distracting blemishes from our image. Let's take the time to really look at the subject of our photo. This will help us determine how much we should remove and what tool will be used to remove it. Because most of these blemishes are small and in areas that are mostly uniform, the spot healing brush tool would be perfect to clean up these spots. A spot healing brush is the easiest of the Photoshop retouching tools. Quite a few of the tools require us to sample from areas first, but the spot healing brush does this for us automatically. The spot healing brush tool is great for small imperfections, but the larger the area we need to correct, the less effective it will be. When using the spot healing brush on this image, we're going to target the dots of dust and other small imperfections. To use the spot healing brush tool, first we're going to make sure any edit we do doesn't destroy our original image. To do this, we will create a new layer first by selecting our new layer button. Once we create a new layer, it's important to keep track of it by giving it a name. Double click the layer and name it something that's easy to recognize. I'm going to name this layer spot healing brush. Then. In our options bar at the top of our window, we're going to make sure we have content aware selected and that we're sampling from all layers. Now we can select the area we want to fix and make sure our brush is slightly bigger than the spot we are working on. 
You can increase and decrease the size of your brush on the fly by using the left and right brackets on your keyboard. The left bracket will decrease the size while the right bracket will increase the size of your brush. Once we have the size we want and our brush is slightly bigger than the area we want to edit, all we have to do is left click and it will clean it up for us. For small dots and blemishes, the spot healing brush tool is perfect. But for larger areas or pattern areas, the clone stamp tool is a better option. The clone stamp tool directly copies one area of an image and uses it to paint onto another area. It's Photoshop's version of copy and paste. It's a much better tool to use for larger areas of imperfection or areas that have no data due to tearing or damage. Together with the Spot Healing Brush Tool, the Clone Stamp Tool is used for restoration and photo retouching. To use the Clone Stamp Tool, you need to first set a sampling point on the area you want to copy by holding down Option and left-clicking the sample area. This is us telling Photoshop which area we want to copy from when we're painting. Now, when you paint, it will paint from that sampled area no matter where you are. The clone stamp tool is great for photo restoration, but it can be tricky and takes some getting used to. So here are a few tips for the best results. First, don't be afraid to resample if you need to. Because the sample area moves as you brush, resampling is a good way to make sure you are always cloning the area you want. Second, start small. Because the clone stamp tool is a direct clone of another area, any imperfections in the sample area will be reflected in your painting. This makes it easy to have large areas that look exactly the same and are easy to tell as being Photoshop. Remember, our goal for this is not to detract from the photo, but to enhance it. You also wanna make sure that you're sampling from an area that is similar in tone, quality, and color. While you are fixing the blemishes in your photo, be careful of overcorrecting. Remember our goal for cleaning up scanned photos is not to retouch or restore them but simply to remove any lint that may have gotten caught in the scanning process or blemishes due to age and sun. If you're interested in photo restoration, the Adobe website has an excellent section on retouching and repairing old photos. Thanks for watching this video on how to clean up photos in Photoshop. Now go scan some photos. Happy editing!